Some say there's no place like home, while others say there's no fine dining Italian restaurant like Bellissimo Restaurant and Lounge. You're gonna love it. Today on Megan's Menu, we are at Bellissimo Restaurant and Lounge. Joining me is Chef Jess. She is going to teach us the tricks of the trade when it comes to recreating Italian dishes at home. So first, we're going to start with calamari. What is the trick with calamari? Uh, well, you have to press it overnight to make sure you get all the excess moisture out of it. Okay, and by pressing, you mean? And putting it in a colander with another bowl over top and then weighting it down. So essentially, you're just trying to juice out all the liquid? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, yes. so we've done that. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to? Well, we did that <laughs> and then we uh, marinated it with egg yolks and seasoning salt. Okay. And so that's it. And now we're just going to take it and put it in our very top secret. Uh, breading <laughs> oh. and then give it a quick fry and serve it up. So if you were to bread it at home, maybe just some flour? Oh uh, yeah, some flour, put some seasonings in there like garlic and salt and pepper salt maybe. And pepper, you know, whatever you feel like. Something to taste. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to take my scoop of calamari and I have a slotted spoon here to drain off any of the excess. So do that. Okay, and then we're going to put it in our flour, seasoned flour here. So Jess, sometimes you go to restaurants and you get that rubbery calamari that just doesn't want to break up in your mouth and that's obviously from overcooking it, right? Yes, absolutely. How, how do you know when your calamari is done? Well, you want it to be crispy and light. It'll tell you when it's ready. When you pull it up and you shake it and it sounds crispy, it's done. You, It usually takes about 30 to 45 seconds at a 375 degree fryer. So it's, it's you just don't want to cook it. The best way to do it is um, to sing the birthday song in your head while you're frying it. And uh, by the end of that, it should be ready to go. <laughs> I, I, I was taught to sing the birthday song while I was brushing my teeth. Oh, That's really? how long you should brush your teeth for. Apparently, that's how long you fry calamari for as well. <laughs> now we know. Perfect. Okay, so I'll just put it in the fryer basket here to shake off some of the excess. And if you don't shake off the excess, it will kind of all just clump together, won't it? Absolutely. It clumps together. It creates like big batches of batter that get it mixed in with your calamari and you don't want that, you want the squid. Okay, so that should be good. Even it out a little bit and then we'll just drop it. Make it a little shake. When the bubbles start to slow down, then uh, you know that it's done. Okay. I was just finishing the birthday song good. at that point, so. I got it timed out. <laughs> yeah, good, good timing, Jess. Okay. That'll help drain off the excess. So you know calamari is perfect when you uh, you don't see any of the breading coming off at all. So we got the excess oil off, and now we're just going to give it a little toss onto our plate. And you can see this is perfectly cooked because it has that nice golden texture on the outside. Yes, yeah, it's uh, and it'll be nice and crispy and uh, really tender on the inside. Well, Jess, I mean, really, there's only one way to know if it's nice and crispy or not. <laughs> and we're just going to have to take a little bite. I guess so. Okay, I'm going to dig on in. Lemon's okay with you? Yes, lemon's good. Lemon's okay. good. And um, then we have the basil aioli here. Some people like to serve it with tzatziki, but we love our basil. So, so what, would be in your, what would be in your aioli? It's, it's a basil paste that we make. Okay. And then we just incorporate it into uh, mayonnaise with a little bit of garlic and salt and pepper. So really, if you have mayonnaise as the base, you can add sort of any flavoring. Absolutely. And dip it, really any the calamari in anything because it'll taste great. Absolutely. Okay, I'm just going to dig on in here. Go ahead. Mmm. It's hot. <laughs> mm. Perfectly cooked. Definitely not rubbery. Good. Nice crisp. And I have to say, I love the seasonings on it. Good, I'm so glad. Good call, Jess. Thanks. I, th I think you should have one. Oh, okay. Well, if you insist. When in Rome, right? When in Rome. <laughs> or, or in Bellissimo. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? 
MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind-the-scenes footage, and exclusive news. Do you own or manage a restaurant that you would love to have featured on Megan's Menu? If so, email us and tell us everything about your establishment. But hurry, our next season is booking up fast. If you're interested in being on the show or working with us behind the scenes, we have volunteer opportunities available and we would love to hear from you. It's wonderful. It's just a, it's just a great place. Up next we have the Misto plate. And this is a, a cheese and meat platter. And this is served as a appetizer. Perfect. Okay, so let's start. <laughs> okay, so perfect. So we start off with some freshly sliced Italian meats. I'll give those to you. Who doesn't um, like Italian meats? Just saying. <laughs> yeah, they're the best, actually. Yeah. So we have here we have some cavicolo. Calabrese and Genoa salami. Okay. Okay, so we just we usually just take it and we're gonna uh, just throw it on there. Nicely. Well, yeah, usually what we do is we could just fold it up a little bit. Oh, I didn't do the fold. <laughs> yeah, you got to make it look pretty. Yeah, but you can okay. twirl that if you like. Okay, I'm gonna twirl it just like this way. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Four hands are better than two, Jack. Absolutely, absolutely. So here we have some. Asiago cheese. One of my favorites. Yes, I love that. So we just kind of put it on there really nicely. Have it stand up. So why do you think this is such a staple in Italian cuisine, meat and cheese? It's because um, the way Italians eat specifically is to have little bites all am, the time. Am I folding this? Oh, okay. sure. You can fold it. Like okay, this going over here. Beautiful. Yes. Okay, sure. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, so they eat a lot of meat and cheese. It's just in their diet. Like, this is a very popular dish to share. Italian cuisine is all about sharing and having, like, the family style was born there. So, anyway, so here we have some smoked provolone cheese. Oh, I love provolone. Oh, me too. Okay, so just layer that on there like this. Mm. Then we have some notch bocaccini here. So this essentially is fresh mozzarella. Yes, yeah, fresh baby mozzarella, there you go. Just a couple little knots here and there. Oh, those look delicious. Yes, and then here we have some Hawaiian pink sea salt. So just a little bit of a sprinkle, because the mozzarella itself is a really mild flavor, so the salt on it kind of bumps it up a little bit, gives it a nice flavor. So then we have our finishing touch here. I have to say, I love the look of the knotted mozzarella. It's, yeah, it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. We actually just started doing that, and I love it. Oh, prosciutto. Yes, we need some prosciutto in here. I look at this plate, and all I think is, I just want a nice glass of wine. <laughs> a few more months to go. Only a few more months. Yeah. <laughs> so here we have just some nice green olives in a brine. These are really nice because they're not super salty. They have um, more of a mild flavor to them. I really enjoy. Well, and I have to say, these olives aren't your typical green olives. They have quite a different color, which, you know, is kind of unique. Mm -hmm. And they feel a bit harder than normal. Yeah, they are, and they're they're straight from Italy. They're really nice. Um, I just, I like them because they're not that crazy, curried, salted brine uh, that you're usually used to in getting a green olive. They're more mild. I really enjoy that about them. Well, since we're talking about the olives so much, I'll just take a little taste. Watch the pit. <laughs> Yeah. So here we have some marinated roasted red peppers that we do in house. Oh yeah. And they're just marinated with some basil and garlic, salt and pepper. So what's the what's the trick for roasted red pepper? Roasting it in the oven, then sort of letting it, you know, sit in the marinade with olive oil and the herbs? Yeah, absolutely. Like usually what we do is we put it on our grill and we get it really nice and black on the outside. And then you put it in a bowl with uh, saran wrap and let it kind of steam itself and then the peel just comes right off. That's the trick for the That's skin, the That's getting the it trick. right off. Yeah. Well, this is a fine looking plate, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna dig on in here. What should I go for first? Um, usually what I like to do is take a piece of the Genoa and maybe put a piece of the provolone with maybe uh, some roasted red pepper in there. Oh, fancy, we'll make like a little sandwich here. Yeah. Okay, why not? Looks awesome. Mm. 
It looks great and it tastes even better. Come on, Jess, get in okay. there. All right, now I'll twist my rubber arm here. Ooh, Capicolo, Asiago. I think I'm going to go for some of this um, fresh mozzarella. No, oh, yeah, the, the knot. Oh, my Buen God. Appetito. Yeah, there we go. Why not? Mmm. Yeah. Pink sea salt. The Hawaiian pink sea salt. So you brought this all the way back from Hawaii? Mm hmm Oh. It's delicious. It, it almost has a little smokiness to it. It's really nice. Um, I bought a variety of uh, mm. salts when I was there. And uh, it's for this the baby. my favorite. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Baby's like, I like meat and cheese. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't? This is fabulous. Thank you so much for showing us. Now we can easily recreate this at home. Mm -hmm. Or, if you don't want to recreate it, come and see Chef Jess, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is probably a better option. Probably, yeah, you should come see me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind the scenes footage, and exclusive news. Stone Creations for your home repairs, renovations, and maintenance. From small repairs to large projects, we've got you covered. For more details, visit us at 12stonecreations.com or call us at 204-599-3357. a restaurant that you would love to have featured on Megan's menu? If so, email us and tell us everything about your establishment. But hurry, our next season is booking up fast. If you're interested in being on the show or working with us behind the scenes, we have volunteer opportunities available and we would love to hear from you. Up next we have the Pesce Asiago. Now I have to say, Jess, this is one of my all-time favorite dishes. Every time I come to Bellissimo, Unfortunately, I'm one of those people that get the exact same thing every time. <laughs> I know, you're like one of those. And th this is the dish I get, simply because it's creamy, it's delicious, and it has a whole whack load of seafood, which I love. Yeah, you know what, I don't have a problem with that. If people love something and they keep coming back for it, that only makes me happy. But I think next time I'm gonna have to, you know, broaden my horizons and maybe add some fig. Yes, yeah, probably. <laughs> Maybe try the uh, pecan chicken that your grandma loves. <laughs> oh, Grandma McCangus does love the pecan chicken. Okay, so let's make the Pesce Asiago because I'm dying to know how you make it. Okay, perfect. So we're going to start off. I'm going to put some mussels and shrimp in my pan here. Perfect. So about nine mussels and three prawns. You know, mussels are one of those things that, you know, my husband and I, we do make it at home because we cook a lot mm -hmm. and he'll sometimes say, you know, honey, can you make me mussels? And I'll say, yeah, sure, I'll make them, but you have to de-beard them. And then I hear all sorts of fancy words coming out of the kitchen because it's <laughs> no fun at all. No, it's really not. <laughs> no. Okay, so I'm going to take this over and we'll cook it down. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it down until the mussels start to open up and that the butter and uh, garlic come together into a creamy, delicious sauce. 
And if you have a muscle that does not open, do not try to open it and save it. Throw no. it out because it's no good. He's dead. He's dead <laughs> and you don't want to eat him. No. So at this point, just add a little bit of, this is a loose bechamel sauce. So it's just cream and butter with garlic cooked down, uh, but not fully so that we can add it again later. So what, that, what is the chunk? Butter? Butter. It's butter, fat, solids that are cold. Butter, fat, solids. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Yeah, butter, fat, solids. Yeah, so then at this point we're going to add the delicious cheese, the Asiago right here. Uh, here we have some baby clams. We're not shy with the seafood. No. <laughs> so now I can bring it over here and start cooking it down again. I can start on my scallops, which obviously are the crown jewel of the plate. So, okay, scallops you need a hot pan. What is the importance of the hot pan? Well, the importance of the hot pan is that it's going to sear all of the proteins and it, that's going to stop it from sticking. So now we're just going to let that go until it comes, oops, until it comes, I don't know if you can see in the pan here, but there's a white line that's starting to form out there and it'll travel all the way up when it gets to about 80%. Perfect. The scallops will tell you when they're done as well. They'll start coming apart. If they're still sticking to the pan, they're not ready to flip. Okay. So I give them a little bit of a check there. Give them a little wiggle. A little wiggle. They're coming off. So you just, oh, look at that. Boom. So at this point, I'm just going to crank it down because the worst prime, in my opinion, is to overcook a scallop. At this point, I'm going to drop my pasta. It's linguine verde which we actually get from nature's pasta, so it's a Winnipeg business. So, the verde, is it spinach? Yes. Yeah. Spinach pasta, add a little health, health in there. So at this point, I like to just move all of my uh, mussels right up to the top of the pan. And then I'm gonna put my pasta in there. And again, very important to cook, finish the pasta off in the pan. Okay, so we put the pasta right down into the center. Arrange the mussels. Okay. And we're gonna use all of our yumminess here. The clams and the shrimp. The clams and the shrimp. And then of course then we have our scallops to add on at yes. the end. Perfect. So there we go. Okay, and then I finish it with a little bit more parmesan. And then right over here. microgreens. So here we have your favorite dish, the pesce asiago. This is my favorite dish simply because of all the seafood. There you go. Thank you. Again, another really colorful dish. I love the pink from the shrimp, but I also love pink. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good color. Yeah. Chef, the richness of the the butter and the cream sauce is awesome, especially with the seafood. I absolutely love it. If you come to Blissmo, which I'm sure you will now, make sure you get this dish and make sure you get the scallop. Say it's a small restaurant that punch a lot of flavor. So if there is an opportunity to come, I would certainly recommend it. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind the scenes footage, and exclusive news.
call 12 Stone Creations for your home repairs, renovations, and maintenance. From small repairs to large projects, we've got you covered. For more details, visit us at 12stonecreations.com or call us at 204-599-3357. manage a restaurant that you would love to have featured on Megan's menu? If so, email us and tell us everything about your establishment. But hurry, our next season is booking up fast. If you're interested in being on the show or working with us behind the scenes, we have volunteer opportunities available and we would love to hear from you. Okay, so up next on the menu we have chocolate gelati. Now, this is my first question. What is the difference between gelati and gelato? Uh, gelati is the plural of gelato. So, because we're just making one flavor, we're making gelati. Gelato. Gelato. <laughs> one day I'll get this straight. Okay, so let's start. How do we make this? Okay, so first I'm going to start by whipping my egg yolks and my sugar together. So I have my egg yolks in there and then I add half of the sugar. Kind of beat them until they're light and fluffy and all the sugar is fully incorporated and melted into them. So I have cream. milk, and then the other half of my sugar. So we're going to heat this up until it starts steaming because we're going to use it to temper our eggs. So now our uh, cream and milk mixture has come to a point where it's getting hot, there's some steam rolling off the top of it, so we can add our cocoa powder. And Jess, this would be the point really when you can add any flavoring, right? Absolutely, yeah. You can do vanilla bean, you could do even like pumpkin spice is really popular at this time of year. And then we can start tempering our eggs with our hot chocolate cream mixture here. So again, Jess, you're doing the tempering so that we don't cook the egg. Yeah, you don't want to cook the egg before you get it back on the stove. It just helps it from like creating scrambled eggs essentially. Like we are going to be cooking the egg, but it just don't want chunks of scrambledness here. So you just do it little by little. Slow and city wins this race, hey? Yes, absolutely. When you get about half of the mixture in, the eggs at this point are warmed up enough that they're not gonna scramble when you add the rest of the liquid. So you can just go ahead and pour in the rest. So we're going to reheat this until it reaches 170 degrees. So after we do this, we're going to put strain it over into a bowl and allow the, uh, the ice cream mixture to mature overnight. So that just helps it to thicken up and creates more depth of flavor. Okay, perfect. And we're at 170 right now. So we'll just turn that off. I don't know if you can tell here, but it's nice and thick. Okay, now I'm just going to strain it in here if you want to hold that for me. Sure. This is just to prevent there being any chunks in case we didn't temper it properly. Oh, it smells fantastic. I know, the chocolate smells amazing. You mean we're not going for the chunky monkey chocolate here? No, no, no. no. Not the, not at least not the kind of, uh, not the kind of chunks you want, as no. it turns out. <laughs> you can put that right in there. Perfect, there we Excellent. go. Excellent. So now we'll let this cool in the fridge overnight, and then we'll churn it first thing tomorrow morning. But I didn't want to keep you waiting that long, so I brought some of the, our already made gelati here, and I can plate it for you. <laughs> Thank goodness. The baby yeah. doesn't like waiting for desserts. No. This is our house-made chocolate sauce, so it's good. It's gluten-free too, not that that matters. 
<laughs> well, that's an option. Sure. So we just like to give it a little bit of a swoosh. Fancy. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Our bowl here. You like whipped cream, right? Who doesn't? Okay. Lots of whipped cream, okay, and then the gelato in our scoop. There you go. Thank you. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing. Nice dark chocolate. There we go. Okay, and then I just have a little bit of pink sugar. You mentioned you loved pink, so. Well, I am wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> a little pink sugar on there. So now is the pink sugar simply just pink sugar or is it flavored with like it's a strawberry? Raspberry sugar. Oh, raspberry, fancy. Yes. Italian food is one of those things my husband and I like to make at home, but love to go out and enjoy. If you're in the mood for appetizing appetizers, perfect pasta dishes, and unbelievable desserts like this one, come to Bellissimo Restaurant and Lounge. You're going to love it. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind the scenes footage, and exclusive news. Creations for your home repairs, renovations, and maintenance. From small repairs to large projects, we've got you covered. For more details, visit us at 12stonecreations.com or call us at 204 599 3357. manage a restaurant that you would love to have featured on Megan's menu? If so, email us and tell us everything about your establishment. But hurry, our next season is booking up fast. If you're interested in being on the show or working with us behind the scenes, we have volunteer opportunities available and we would love to hear from you.